Hello and welcome to Tech Talk Live. Wow, what a day. <laughs> you know, all of this video stuff is new, so I'm working on it. I guarantee you I'm going to make this look so much better um, as we go forward here, so bear with me today. That's all I've been doing is fighting with my camera, but it doesn't matter because we're talking about using the CP as a controller um, with the Modi X. So I have my setup here. Boom, look at this. Here's my Modi X up here, my CP. So let's talk about um, how to set this up um, in, um, in a few different ways. So you can immediately use the CP to layer another keyboard in the most basic way without engaging any of the master keyboard control settings, which is what I'm gonna show you. And I want um, to show you the basic way, so if you just wanna do it real fast, super easy, you don't have to worry about all the program change, all the bank select and stuff. But um, as you get more familiar with this, you should really get into the MIDI control settings on the CP, because it's pretty powerful. So first of all, Let's just talk about the CP real quick and how um, how it uh, responds and sends from just its own tone generator. CP is designed to be a stage piano, so it's meant to be very, very simple, right? Easy to use and easy to set up. So CP, all its um, sections, the piano section, the electric piano section, and the subsection send and receive on a single MIDI channel, which is, is cool, actually, because it just makes this much easier to deal with in a DAW. It makes it much easier to deal with if you just want to control a single thing. So easy, simple. However, what it does also have is a pretty advanced MIDI controller mode where you can set this up as a four-zone MIDI controller and send on um, different MIDI channels. So you can one, two, three, four, or whatever you want to set it along with all of the program changes. Bank select, you can tell it whether or not you're going to send a uh, foot controller or not. Um, basically, the way that the, um, oops, let me do one thing here and make sure my, my watch is not making noises. Um, oops, oops, not that one. There we go. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, the Modi X and Montage and the CP have um, very similar MIDI controller setups. Obviously, on something like like the uh, the um, the Modi X above here, it's a bigger screen, so you can see things a lot more than the smaller screen here. But it's functionally very very similar. So first off, let me just show you a very basic thing with this pad that I have set up here. Now, in you're going to see some kind of cool stuff here that. Um, using keyboard control on the Modi X that's pretty cool. You can set up keyboard control on parts that you want to play from the Modi X right here, right? Um, but then you can also not have parts on keyboard control, but control them via, um, via an external controller like a CP below here. So I have the two pads right here. See them? Pad here and pad here. In fact, I'll just select it in the screen so you can really see it. So that pad does not have keyboard control. Now, when I touch it directly, by the way, you can play it directly, and you can see I am playing it, right? But when you're at the top of the performance, everything that has, or I press the performance home button, it's probably easier to do it there. Every single um, sound that has keyboard control in the part in here, right? Any part that has keyboard control on, you play from the keyboard here, but you're not playing anything that doesn't have keyboard control, and you can save that over in a scene, making it very, very simple, okay? So, first thing I wanna do is just show the basic, basic way. So I have this, uh, here's my CP right here, right? Right? CP right here. So what I wanna do is, um, Control the CP, that part nine right there. I want to control it from here, and I'm not going to use any of the master keyboard control setup. Make it super easy. So there are two places to set this up. The deeper master control is going to be in the settings part of the CP right there. So it's saved with the live set. Every single live set can have its own master keyboard controller setup that when you select a live set, it'll send out program changes, and you'll see that in a moment here. Or you go over to menu, and under menu, it's under general. Again, I will get this so you'll be able to see this a lot better. I'm still fighting with my camera, but I will win this battle. Okay, so check this out. General is the first part in the menu. I'm going to select general, and then I'm going to go down here to MIDI settings. 
So you have places in here where it says MIDI port, MIDI channel. That's the next one that I want to go to. So MIDI port, you can engage and disengage both USB and MIDI, and they can work simultaneously, which is pretty cool. Um, but when I go to MIDI channel, what I want to do is I want to set just the basic MIDI channel of the instrument itself to transmit on channel 8, which should control that pad that you see right up here, which I'll select that part again right here. And when um, you'll see it here in a sec. So right now, right, only controlling the part with keyboard control at the top of the performance. I'm going to go over here to transmit channel, and I'm going to set this transmit channel to 8. So if all things work out, you should see 8 move up. Hey, look at that. So that's the simplest way right there. Super simple, just to set up a quick layer, right? Easy. Got it? So that's the easy way. Let's not do it the easy way, though. Or not, not I don't want to put it that way. Let's do it the, the more control way. That's super easy to do, though. So what I want to do in, is I'll go over here, and I'm going to set up. Uh, let me look at what I have in my live sets here. Let's do a basic split, okay? So check this out. I should... I have this already set up here, and I'll go through the settings inside um, the CP in a moment. But before I do that, let me just show you something here. Um, in the MIDI controller section of the CP, there are two different places where you set this up. Um, it's, in, it's actually in the actual live set, and it's under Function, Master Keyboard Settings. And there's three things that, are, that you have that you can choose from in there, a mode switch, and then advanced zone settings, and then zone settings. When you turn the mode switch on, what you get are the master settings, see them over there, where you turn on a zone switch, whether or not it's working, when you turn on actually the mode switch, which engages master keyboard control. Turn on mode switch, you now have master keyboard control, then you have to engage different zones. So I turn on that zone switch, um, and I have control over what, chan when, what channel it will transmit on, one through 16, octave shift, plus or minus, uh, two octaves in either directions, transpose, so you can transpose individually, and then note limit high and low. That's where you'd set it if you're going to do something with a split point, right? Now, below the mode switch is advanced zone switch. Advanced zone switch unlocks all of these. Why do we have it this way? Well, I think the biggest reason is that sometimes you just want to turn on a zone, have some octave switch, have a little bit of, uh, of transpose, and that's it. And it just and, and th that's all you need. You don't need to send out bank MSB LSB, which is bank select, um, program change volume, pan, and then all those things that you can either say, I want to transmit j notes, I want to transmit bank and program per zone. So you can have different things that way, where it will send out individual program changes per zone. So you have a lot more depth that you can set up when you turn on that advanced um, master setting. So I usually turn on advanced master settings because I use it quite a lot um, and I want it available to me. So I just turn them all on. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the settings for the CP right there. Um, by the way, I should let you know this. There is a uh, zones versus settings for the CP that is up on yamahasynth.com. It's an article that will take you through a lot of this stuff that has to do with zones and settings, including master keyboard control. There's a section in there that I wrote in there about this as well. Okay, moving right along. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to go back out, and now I've saved these already in a, um, in a, in a, uh, a live set in here. So I'm going to go over here and select CFX Basic Split. Now look what happened here if I selected this. Oops, let me do this. Um, Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to send a program change over to the, um, the, uh, the Modi X here that calls up this sound here. It's called acoustic bass and jazz guitar. So how do I do that? Well, let's set it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch on settings first. I'm going to touch master keyboard. I'm going to go to mode switch. And let's see what I got. So I have um, my mode switch is on, advanced zone switch is on, and uh, let's go here, oops, and zone settings, zone one. So, so I've already set this up where I have the bass in my left hand and the piano in my right hand, which is exactly what I want. So how did I set this up? Well, 
first of all, when I brought up that zone, I want the zone switch on, I move it down to transmit channel one, I am in multi-mode, so it's gonna send on part one and receive on, or rather send on part one here. Um, now, another thing that I had here, and this is where the octave switch is important, when I pulled this up the first time and I had the octave switch set at zero, it's, it's too low, right? So you wanna maybe switch that octave switch up by zone. So I touch that, move it up one, My, there's my split. Let's go down here. Transpose. No, I don't want that, but note limit low. Well, minus two is what I want there, but note limit high, I want it right at that F. So, and that's where I have it set. So, to do that, you literally just go into, you select note limit high, touch on, use the, the enter button here to touch on the, on the actual enter, and it has, you can see it right there in the screen, kind of a uh, little blurry, but you see it. F2, check it out. All you gotta do is touch where the split point is where you want it, it automatically sets it. Now I've got it there, I set it at F2, right? Okay, now these other things in here, bank MSB, LSB, program change. Um, I think I may have turned off my program change in here, but um, how did I get this information to call up this sound? Um, I think I turned it off earlier, but check this out. If you didn't know this on Modiax, here's a little tip for you. Uh, touch, or you just touch the performance button. And when you do that, you'll look over on the um, left side of the screen, and there's a little property button right here. Touch on property, and guess what? It gives you the things that you put in to call up the sound and send out the program change. So you literally go in there, and now these MSB, LSB program change things to change that sound, that performance to bring up the sound, um, that's the only way you're going to see those is if you turn on the advanced mode switch on the CP. So that's literally in the very first master keyboard when you go, let me back it up here, settings, function master keyboard, right, enter, mode switch on, right, that turns on the actual master keyboard control. Um, advanced zone switch is the next one. You want to turn that on. So when that's off, all you see are is, is just those first sound in the, in the column, the first selections in the column that I had in the previous slide. You know, this one here. If you don't have advanced mode switch, you don't see any of that stuff here, right? But I've turned on advanced mode switch, boom, and then I see everything in the advanced master settings right there, which is what I have set here. And then zone settings, then when I go to zone one, as I move down, now you get bank LSB, MSB, program change, volume, pan, and so on. Pretty cool, pretty straightforward. Yeah, got it? Now I wanna show you something else, by the way. Remember when I said that in a dual keyboard setup with something like a Modi X, if you see in the screen up there, my um, keyboard control is set for part two. So I have a guitar up here, piano down here, and then bass that I'm playing right here. It's cool how that works. Um, so both things can, can it, it's a great little system that you have in here. Up here, I have all of my sounds, brass sections, all the stuff that you get with a Modi X, but then the killer weighted action um, down here, but I can use them both. That's pretty cool. At least I think that's pretty cool. Okay, let me show you something else here. Um, okay, so... Uh, okay, so with this one, um, for whatever reason, let me find out which one I'm looking at here. Uh, oh, I know what's going on. One moment, please. Ha 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 ha. Sorry. Okay, one more time. I had disabled my program changes as I was getting ready for today. So this should do it. Boom, look at that. So remember I said the basic split, 
that will call that up right here because I sat. So I wonder why that wasn't working. Now I understand. Let me tell you what I just did here. Um, under that MIDI settings right here, you have MIDI settings, right? In the general. Now we're looking under menu again. Um, there is a place where you can disable program change and uh, bank select as well, which before I started here, I actually did that. Now that's a global setting, so it turns it off for everything. You don't want to do that. That was my bad. Now it's on again. So again, menu, general, MIDI settings, MIDI channel, MIDI control, right? MIDI channel under here. And then you go down to transmit, program change, transmit, bank select. Make sure those are on or it will not send out program change and bank select. My bad. My bad. Okay. Now we're working good. Okay, so CP73 multi-zone is what I call this one. You saw what happened there, the multi-zone TTL. Now, with this one, what I wanted to do was set up a four-zone kind of situation using some um, using independent parts here. So each one of these parts is sending and receiving on a different channel. Um, in conjunction with that, it's cool. I can turn off a section here, but I still have... So I have this kind of set where it's split. But you notice that none of the sections are on in the CP, but it's still working as a controller. That's a cool feature. As soon as I turn on a section, obviously, that's the, uh, the um, 73RD um, with a touch wah effect. But it's also layering with parts two and three inside the, um, you know, on the Modi X right here, right? Then down here, I have parts one and four split left and right. How did I do that? Settings, master keyboard. Um, I already have the mode switch on, right? I have advanced zone switch on, right? Oops, sorry. Now I'm going to go down to zone settings, and let's look at zone one. Zone one, zone switch is on. It's set to transmit on channel one. In fact, let's do this. I'm going to turn off each of the zones first, and then I'll turn them on so you can see how each of them uh, behave. So off. Let's go back to zone two. Off. Let's go back to zone one. Okay, so now all the zones are off. You turn off even the, uh, right, except zone one. So zone one, what I did was, it's calling part one, you see it right there in the screen. Um, transmit channel one. Octa switch plus two. See, I wanted it to be sort of a cool pad thing over here, so I didn't want the octave to be down here. Too muddy, doesn't work. So, settings, sorry, zone settings, one. Let's go down here to octave shift, and we'll move it back up to two. Transpose. Um, nope, no transpose. Note limit C minus two, so all the way down, but I have it set at C3, so that's where the split point is going to be, right? Now, in this case, what I did was I set this zone to call the actual performance change, so it changes the whole performance when I have the actual, uh, you know, send bank select set correctly at the menu level, so it will work at the live set level. Um, so bank LSB 6432, 6432 calls up the performances. If I set it to 63, bank select 63 actually grabs individual parts where you can send out program changes to grab individual parts as well. In this case, I just want to call the whole performance because it brings everything up as I have it set in here. Um, you can set it so it will send out the correct volume for each part as well. Um, but again, how did I get to that? Remember here, boom, select here. Go to, uh, oops, sorry, right there, property. See, I just entered that right in here. Super easy to do. Okay, so that's zone one. Zone two, in fact, and we'll get these done. I'm going to turn off zone two. Now I'm going to go over here to zone one, and I'll turn on zone, or I'll go to zone two now and turn that zone on. Now check this out. I realized when I set this up that I wanted to have this zone two. I wanted the choir sound and the pad sound to set together. So these are both set to plus two. But I set the transmit channel 
to channel four to grab and call the pad choir here so that when I turn them both on, which is what I'm gonna do right now, I'll turn on zone one now. Now I have one and four, zone one, two, one sending on channel one. Zone two is sending on channel four. Make sense? Okay, now I don't add anything up here, so let's see what I did for the other zones here. So I'll go back here, let's go to zone three. I'm gonna turn on that zone switch. Okay, that's sending out on channel two. And it's this cool chromatic percussion bell sound. And I don't have anything really set here. Um, the one thing I did though is as I moved down, I disengaged all transmitting of bank select for that zone just in case anything were happened where I could send out a program change. You can actually do that at the zone level as well. So you have a lot of control over how you wanna set things up inside the zone. So I'm only calling the main performance program change in zone one that calls up the whole performance and then everything else is being controlled within that performance. Okay, let me go down here to zone four now. Zone four will turn on. And that's that electro code sound. So pretty cool. Check this out. Turn on that piano part, right? The electric piano part. Now I have this. That's pretty cool. I think that is so cool. I wonder if I had this set up. By the way, I should point something out. You see where it says MST in the top of the screen there? What's cool about that? Well, um, as soon as I turn on master keyboard control, it tells you that you have master keyboard control on at a glance in the CP screen right here. So just a nice thing. If I turned it off, which I'll do right now, just turn off master keyboard control, that goes away, but so does my controlling of the, the parts in it. By the way, because I had this set as a, uh, let me, as a split, I actually sent this for right here and then set my split point on the CP so that I have the CP stuff split as well to go along with the split that I've set up in the keyboard control area. Let me turn on master keyboard control one more time. Turn it on, now it's back. Cool, pretty cool. Let me show you one other thing here too. Sorry. Um, I'll do a couple things. One of them, I'll bring up the lead of Apollo is what I call this one. So, the lead of Apollo. So what I do with this, by the way, I'm gonna go back here just to show you how cool this is. Um, when I had it set for C CFX multi-zone, right? And it should have called that back up, and there it is, CFX multi-zone. I didn't show this, by the way. So I have my stuff in here, but you notice once again, keyboard control is set for part Five, so I can still play two different zones. But I'm not playing any of the other parts. See? Cool. Kind of a cool system you got here when you have it all set up in this way. Top keyboard just playing part five, everything else being played from here. Um, now we're going to go to the lead of Apollo. Okay, so the lead of Apollo here is, I have just part five again here, set to be played from the top keyboard, and it's this cool uh, electric piano part in the Modi X. But what I did was I have all these parts here in the night. That's all that that is, the same exact lead sound. And, and how you do that, you can just go over here and you hold shift, and edit, and you can you can copy parts over. So I've just copied the part four times all the way across. Now, why I call this a cool <laughs> the lead of Apollo is because I have a lot of stuff going on down here in the um, in the CP. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to go drop down here. I'm going to go down here to Master Keyboard. Um, I'm going to go down here. Mode switch is on. We've already been through zones. I have all four zones active with this one. But what I did was I created a cool. Um, kind of lead sound that I'm playing from here. Um, and what I did was 
I have something sh set an octave. So zone one right now is calling up. Is calling up just the. In fact, let me turn off. I'm going to do that one more time. Let me turn off all my zones, and we'll turn them all each as we go through them. Turn off zone, so you can hear exactly how I built this sucker up here. Get on the mic so they can hear you. Okay, so here's zone. You turn off my sections here, so all you're hearing is Modi X. So there's one. So it's actually set two octaves high. Right? Pretty simple. It's also calling up. I'm using this zone to call that um, particular performance right here. So 60, bank select 64, 32, program change 5. Right? Okay, zone 2. Let's turn on zone 2 and hear what happens with that one. So this one is set, again, it's just octaves. So now I just have the octave set, right? Cool. So turn on zone two. Now we're going to go to zone three. Now what I did was I put transpose to plus seven on this one, um, and the octave is set at zero. So what happens there? Well, let's find out. I'm going to turn on the zone switch. I have... Right? But it's not being transposed here. The CP is doing the transposition. Check it out. I'll just change it right here. Changing it from the CP. Okay, there's one zone. Okay, zone four. This is why it's called the lead of Apollo. Um, this one is plus one, an octave up, right? And then I have the transpose plus two, so it's a second up. So I have this cool, basically perfect fourth kind of lead sound that you will hear as soon as I <laughs> not exit out of there, but turn on zone four. So right now, all you're hearing is Modi X. When you turn on these other parts, boom, let me go back to the thing. So you have uh, 74 RD stage, which we add in, what, the last OS update, which I love these two new time pianos. With phaser and, uh, let me turn on phaser too. Super slow phase. And then I had another one, Classic Mini, one of the lead sounds we added in OS 1.2, right, for CP? So kind of cool, you know, way to do it. By the way, so you have like, still have the electric piano up here to play. Isn't that cool? You can really do some neat things with this guy. Last thing, the very last thing I want to do is what if I want to control the CP? So this is called CP under control. And with this one, um, I'll just show you how to set this guy up. Remember, since CP sends and receives on a single MIDI channel, this is easy to do to set up something interesting down here. In this case, I have sign lead, 73RD, jazz flute. So I want to go back to my menu settings and just take a look here. And in this case, I do not have the master keyboard control on at all. This is now being used sort of as a tone generator, right, if I wanted to do this. So I go over here to general MIDI settings, and then you want to check your MIDI channel. You want to check your MIDI channel. And I want to make sure it's receiving, right, on channel 9. Sure, okay, fine. So what, how do I set it up here to control this whole thing? Well, in utility mode, on a Modi X, you have to go to MIDI I.O., advanced settings are right here, right? And you see where it says Zone Master in the screen? It's off by default, which makes sense. There are people that um, I've seen that said, I can't figure out how to set this up as a controller, and this is what it, it, it you, you don't want it on all the time. You want to control that. So we have this button here that turns it on. Now I can engage Zone Master in every single um, performance. It also makes it a cleaner kind of look inside the, uh, the, the Modi X as well. So same thing here. So I'm going to go over here to this part right here. I'm going to touch on edit. Now when you turn on zone control, what happens is you get these two new things here, zone settings and zone transmit. 
So I want to control this instrument down here, right? So I want to turn on, first of all, turn on that zone setting, right? And then I want to make sure I have everything set up. Now, in the, uh, I can call up the sound as well. I can send out program change messages. In the, um, the uh, CP manual, it has the data list for all of the preset um, performances. And everything is set to, to um, bank number will be uh, 63. And then the, the LSB calls up the different live sets, OK? Check it out. So there's 20 live sets, eight a piece. And then the, um, the MIDI program change number calls up one through eight as far as program change numbers. So if you wanted to get to live set one, right, um, MIDI program change, you know, just live set one, uh, live set bank one, 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 just the very first sound. You would set it to 630101. Boom, that gets it. You want to go live set number two, just number two. You would go 6301, or no, no, sorry, 6300, that's one, because it's, it's um, you know, whole numbers, right? 63001, live set one. 63002, live set two. 63003, live set three, up to eight, right? And then it goes to one to get to the next live set. Anyway, email me <laughs> if you want a better explanation than what I just gave. Here... What I want to do is I want to set this now. In fact, it's set up. I already set it up here to transmit on channel 9. Now, I am definitely playing the sounds of the, um, of the CP. Let me get out of here. From this part right here. See? both are. So if you want to control from here up there, you get it. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty easy when you get into this and then you start seeing the different creative possibilities on how you can set things up where you want to set up uh, things like tuning or transposition or split points or whatever. You can really do quite a lot with just two keyboards set up this way. If you have more things, you want to start working in all sorts of um, lots of different stuff. That's when I, you know, Think about looking into something like Camelot or um, Main Stage or Gig Performer, whatever, anything that kind of controls those on a computer. But from a straight up, very basic kind of two keyboard setup like this, you can do a whole lot with the keyboard control modes in both of these instruments, particularly the CP right here. So, um, hey, let's take a look at something else here. Don't forget about the music production guide, please. Join. Link is in the description. Ten years of music production guides done by Easy Sounds and Hans Peter Hinkel, who has written a lot of these great guides. There's one coming very soon, I think at the end of the month. Um, you will want to check that out. Um, the last one, I believe, was on, I think it's still Modiex, um, Modiex uh, DAW control mode, which is pretty cool. Sound Mondo. Um, upload sounds, download sounds. Join the community. You can find tons and tons of sounds for the supported products, Reface, Montage, Modiex, um, CP, YC. Did I get them all? I think I did. Um, at Sound Mondo, over 65,000 sounds up there now. Lots and lots of sounds. Um, got an idea for a Yamaha synthesizer? Go to the Idea Scale community right there. You see the link in the description. Um, and let me tell you, we go through this. In fact, I think we just had a meeting yesterday where we went through a lot of different um, really good ideas that we are definitely, um, you know, looking at them and putting them together and sending them off to our engineers to see if they can be implemented. Um, you know, so go up to idea scale, give us your idea, and we will definitely take a look at it. Um, SoundCloud, we have the Behind the Synth podcast up there. We have um, lots of audio demos. I just put up Howard Massey's second and third FM uh, articles that are amazing by uh, the guy that wrote the book on, I mean, he literally did write the book on FM, uh, FM synthesis back in the, I think in the 90s, maybe even 80s. But these are great articles, basic FM. All of the sound examples are up on SoundCloud. That was my main point. So uh, you want to check those out as well. 
Yamaha Synth, uh, you know, Yamaha Synth, go to Yamaha Synth, join the forum, look at the stuff we're putting up there. Um, I have a few articles going up today, definitely. One of them, I think, is on a sound demo from Sonic State that I have to uh, get up there today. I put up uh, Dom Segalis' Sound Mondo uh, last week. Anyway, all up on Yamaha Synth, all things Yamaha Synth, go to Yamaha Synth. It's really cool. Well, I'm kind of a little weird in my thing there. Tech Talk Live questions. If you have a question, go to the link in the description. Put the uh, question to us. We didn't really get very many questions this week, but if you have any questions about Yamaha synthesizers, please ask them here, and we'll try our best to answer them. Um, and, uh, hey, here's my camera. I have all sorts of new stuff in here, so my camera's now here above me on this giant uh, lighting har uh, truss that I have above me now. Um, but anyway, thank you so much. Next week on Tech Talk Live, we're going to cover, I believe, CPDAW connectivity, which is very cool. You won't want to miss it. If you have any questions, synthesizers at Yamaha. Synth, no, synthesizers at Yamaha.com. Synthesizers at Yamaha.com. Send an email there, and uh, someone, someone that looks a lot like me might answer that question. If you have any questions about today's um, uh, Tech Talk Live or any questions about the MIDI controller aspect at all that I didn't cover, please send an email right there. Um, until next week, thank you so much for watching. This is Blake with Yamaha Synthesizers. Um, I definitely appreciate you all. Have a great one. See you next week. <laughs>